Welcome. Good morning. We have again Andrew Work, editor in chief of Harbor Time. That's right. And here I am with Vincent Wong, the founder of Hong Kong Solutions on Wheels. Thank you. And right. uh, just to remind you, uh, we will be taking a Christmas to New Year break. Yep. And uh, so this is the last three episodes of this year of 2015. So next time. Uh, Next time we're Thursday, I'm sorry. Yeah, we've got Thursday, we got Thursday, <laughs> we got Friday, but we're, I'm sorry. We're, we're getting in the I, Christmas I'm, I'm, spirit. Yeah, and yeah, you, know, yeah. you know what I'm reminded of? Yeah. Uh, years ago, when there were big problems in Ethiopia, mm. uh, it started with the British, and yeah. then the Canadians, and then the Americans all got together, all the musicians, and raised some money through song. Oh, yes. Right? And they, they had, there was a whole series, Do They Know It's Christmas Time at yeah. All? It was the British one. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Canadian one was fantastic. Um, but here in Hong Kong, you know, when we look to the parts of the world that seem to have the most trouble, you know, thinking of refugees and refugees fleeing different places. Today in council, we've got Ip Kwa Kim playing the public security card. Yep. The, we must strengthen our walls, strengthen our defenses. All right. In other places, there seems to be a debate, and everybody's all for better security. Yep. Um, he's concerned about the 10,000 people, uh, what we call, uh, that are, that are in, uh, being processed of, with non-refoulement claims. which means Non-refoulement claims? Non-refoulement. Non-refoulement is the idea that you don't take somebody who's a genuine refugee being persecuted and yes. send them back to the place where they're being persecuted. Yeah. So there's apparently 10,000 outstanding cases in the backlog. Yeah. And, you know, the message is all cracked down. You know, because there's all these, you know, and so if Kwakian was concerned that we need to step up uh, surveillance at the airports yeah. and, you know, guard our Yeah, bodies. because a lot of these claims yeah. are actually not legitimate. Uh, yeah. And they, they, uh, they, yeah. They, claim, they, they, they claim yes uh, they are under political prosecutions, but in the end, after investigations, it's uh, because of economic so hardships. Yeah. yeah. But not all of them. No, and of course, yeah, you see? the illegitimate ones block up the system and cause more hardship for the yeah. legitimate claimants, which is a real problem. Yeah. But the one thing I think is missing, and this is where I'm bringing it back to this whole Christmas spirit, and when there was a problem in Ethiopia, people pulled together, and, you know, we have this whole Syrian refugee problem, and from time to time, you do hear the tighten our borders, crack down, you know, type things. But I can't think of a single politician in Hong Kong who said, do you think we should maybe take some of these refugees in from Syria? Is there something we can do to help? Nobody in the political spectrum has said anything like that. And there seems to be a little bit of... Uh, I don't know why. We don't seem to have that impulse in Hong Kong at the political level. Mm. There's a lot of it going on in the private sector with people organizing individual charities and events to raise money to support. But I don't see anybody in our political class saying, could we be doing good in the world? It's here's all an, inward here's looking. An, here's a possible answer for yeah. your questions. I think um, if you take a world view yeah. to accept more refugees... A lot of any, our, any, like yeah. not even one for Hong Kong. Yeah. A lot of our legislators, the Syrian thing. a lot of our legislators would yeah. worry that would trigger some unpleasant memories of their voters, and in particular, the uh, taking in refugees, the Vietnamese boat people, Vien Vietnamese, or even yeah, uh, some legislators would link that with taking more mainland right immigrants. Yeah, you see, once you open. Once you talk about a more open door, yes, then but this all sort of issues would be yeah, would be flooding in. But I think, if, and I don't yeah. think our legislature have that level of moral courage. Yeah, because next year they got their elections coming. Yeah, up. yeah, and this is quite unfortunate for well, a metropolitan. Yes, for an international city as wealthy as Hong Kong and successful yeah. as this Hong Kong. This is quite unfortunate. Yeah, and I mean, I, it's it's funny because. Some people say, oh, well, that's more of a national issue. The, the national government should deal with it. You know, but I'm looking at, like, Vancouver. The city of Vancouver is building a refugee welcome center. So basically a place where people can come in, they can get, get on their but feet, this is what, and then okay. put them out in the community. You, are going, to a, to, you are going to an area that I really hate. Okay. Yeah, uh, a lot of the Hong Kong people, when, when they want to talk about uh, global issues, yeah. if it is about uh, bringing in benefits to Hong Kong, yeah. then they will advertise. They're all for it. Yeah, Hong Kong is a global city. We should yeah. have this, we should have yeah. that. But when you're talking about international responsibilities, then they will say, no, 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 it's a national issue. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid there is something this to is that. This is really bad. I mean, not only the refugees' issues. Yeah. I mean, talk about global warming. Yeah. I mean, Hong Kong would say, oh, this is 
uh, national policy is, is none of our business. Yeah. I mean, they would never, or even the officials, the government officials. Yeah. They won't go beyond. And I wrote about exactly that last week. They won't go beyond. Yeah, and, there's, and there's no community initiative. Like I wrote about last week was in Germany. People like don't even wait for the government. They just go do things. But here on that issue, you don't see anything. So, yes, we want to get kind of all the benefits of being a global city, but there's no sense of us being having a, res- a responsible role to play in a global system. So yeah, we I have. Know, the, maybe we're too obsessed with our own issues, our own problems. We have. But the, it's Christmas time. Wow. Well, yeah. We have the global appetite, <laughs> but we don't have the global mind. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. So maybe this Christmas time, maybe, you know, between you and I, we can put a little call there. Maybe a couple of people start thinking, hmm, you know, where, there's, where people need help in the world, maybe there's something more Hong Kong can do. And like I said, I think our private sector does tons of it. Oh, yeah. Tons of it. I'm involved in so many charity events uh, out of the private sector that help out if, everything from Africa to, I mean, really, it's, it's amazing. But it uh, doesn't seem well, 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 we'll get there. We'll close. get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. And it, I'm trying to put a little bit of Christmas spirit in the show this week. Good work, Andrew. All right, I'll uh, be looking out for you on your amazing website, HKSW, which of course I, I follow. On Facebook and YouTube, and also, of course, Harbor Times. Search for it with a U in yes. uh, YouTube and Facebook. Sure, get on our Twitter feed. I'll be on it even while we're on holiday. All right, okay. All right. Go, Andrew. Sure, Merry Christmas. <laughs>